a key thing in computer animation and the rendering is the depth of field. This is the Wikipedia article about depth of field. If you don't know who writes the Wikipedia, just click on view history just for your interest and you will see that lots and lots of people contributed to this article. You can uh, go back to the first article by clicking on, uh, wait a minute, on the oldest, oldest here, and you see that the article started sort of in September 2001. That's basically when Wikipedia was founded, I guess. And if you check, click on this link, this is the original article about depth of field. So um, you can always go back in history in Wikipedia. That's one of the reasons why uh, the maintenance of Wikipedia costs a lot of money because you have to keep all the data uh, current, even the old ones. So this is the article about depth of field and what it's about, you see easily here in the uh, little pictures here, GIF animations, but uh, or this boy is standing out in front of the background, which is blurred. This, that's what basically um, this is about. Uh, here, for example, an, an image uh, loaded for free up to Wiki Commons and fed into the Wikipedia article by Muhammad Mahdi Karim uh, is uh, a series of photos, three photos of a fly. And uh, we see that the here the head is in focus and the rest isn't. The top legs, the front legs are partly in focus. This part, for example, is and the back, uh, only the, the knee, so to say, is. But this is uh, very close to us. That's why it's slightly out of focus. Here the focus uh, moves to the back of the uh, insect. And here everything seems to be in focus. That's a, a matter of the f-stop. Uh, it's the opening of the lens and when you photograph with a smartphone you cannot achieve this wonderful and very cinematic look with uh, lots of depth of field because uh, you have a fixed and uh, very small f-stop. In order to achieve uh, a nice depth of field effect with a smartphone you ta usually take two pictures either with two cameras or with uh, fast uh, one after the other. So uh, you can overlay the, the pictures, the camera interprets the uh, distance and the 3D setting of the whole thing. It's a complicated process and it's very easy and simple with uh, ordinary cameras. Actually the old cameras dealt with that depth of field effect all the time and the photographers wanted more depth of field to get uh, more things in focus than just a, a c c pretty small plane. Uh, you see this, for example, in the German Wikipedia, we have uh, this photograph of Lenin, the politician here, and uh, that was, now it looks like a highly aesthetic, but I think the photographer would have liked the tie to be in focus as well. So we have a very, very shallow depth of field here. And the question is, how can we ach achieve this in Maya? Uh, let me show you a brief drawing I did. This is uh, you with a camera. This is an egg. And this is uh, a bicycle. And uh, this is maybe a stick. So if you want to photograph the stick and have the egg slightly out of focus because it's closer to you and the bicycle out of focus because it's further away from you, you put your lens distance, you focus on that stick or you focus on the egg and then the back uh, objects should be out of focus, the bicycle more than the stick. In order to do this, the camera usually does, does this automatically but you can, and that was uh, how it was done in the old days, you can measure the distance from here, from the lens, actually from the where the film is here, to the egg. You uh, calculate the distance and then you make your shot. 
and uh, the same you can do with the stick or with the bicycle. Of course, if you have a very, very large opening, a very small f-stop, so to say, uh, and you focus on, say, the handle of the bicycle, this will be out of focus, and this out of focus too, and the stick will be so intensively blurred that you won't recognize what they are anyway. So let's jump into Maya now. I prepared this scene. It's a typical boringly looking scene here. And if you analyze what's in there, I built three rockets and um, an atomic mushroom, so to say. And I have only one shader in the whole scene. That's why everything looks gray. And this object here is the one we want to put our focus on because this creates the depth of field effect which we of course cannot see here we cannot see it in the modeling window anyway we need to render the whole image now i switch to that camera press and hold the space bar go to panels and the perspective window offers me the camera i built camera one is the camera the little green icon down there so I'm looking through the camera now so that's what I see I want to have the rockets in focus and the mushroom out of focus and for that purpose I need to measure the distance but where do I put it in and how do I measure it now in the camera shape node here in the attribute editor you have depth of field that's the Maya depth of field. It's switched off. I could switch it on. It gives me a focus distance. That's the distance I talked about from the camera, which is looking through that sort of window or seeing this scene to the rocket and uh, not to the mushroom. So that would be the focal distance. The f-stop is what I just talked about. It's by default, it's 5.6. It's a middle mid-sized um, f-stop. And uh, the focus region scale is uh, telling Maya to render more or less shallow depth of field. So we deal with uh, Arnold these days for rendering. So we close this section and open Arnold. In many, many, many Maya nodes, you find an Arnold section. So this is. Arnold depth of field much larger really what is our camera type it's a perspective window it's not an orthogonal autographic it's called here or fisheye cylindrical or spherical camera so we leave it here the exposure we leave it here filter map we ignore the rolling shutter we ignore as well interesting is depth of field uh, enable depth of field I enabled it and I measured the distance to the rocket already it's 50 whatever that means 50 centimeters 50 meters it's in my units it's 50 and I chose the aperture size which is the f-stop basically and made it very shallow and uh, here I simulate aperture blades which I don't find very impressive uh, it's nice to have but uh, it simulates how the lens is uh, how the f-stop is being made physically and that's basically it so how do we find this distance here 50 we find it by having this scene here in focus and when we click on the rocket in the middle for example we see here distance from camera it's 52.4 something so that's the actual distance from the camera if I go back to spacebar panels perspective and this camera and uh, I select the rocket again I have a distance of 276 which makes sense this camera is much closer to the rocket than the current perspective camera so let's go back to the camera one and in order to see this distance from camera you need to go to display and it's called a heads-up display it gives a, gives you lots of information about the scene and among the details 
is the object details. Details about the objects we selected. So if you turn this on here, um, you will see the distance from the camera. It's often ignored because you, in most cases you don't need, need it, but it's crucial for rendering depth of field. Let's check the mushroom here. So the rocket is about 52. This rocket about 50. This rocket about 54. And this is 160. So it will be largely out of focus now. Let's go back in the outline and maybe select the camera. We can do it selected in different ways. View, select camera, we could do that as well. Now let's go to the render settings. And I think I chose a very large format. Let's make it smaller now, like uh, 1000. And I uh, raised the render settings here. We can lower them again to three, like this. Volume indirect. I think it doesn't play a role here anyway. So let's render it now. Arnold render. And that's what Arnold does. It renders because it's uh, an ambient occlusion shader. A tutorial about the ambient occlusion shader. You find uh, one video before this one. Uh, uh, does a very nice task. It's basically black and white and it renders extremely fast and simulates global elimination aspects. So uh, it's still, uh, no it's not rendering anymore, it rendered five seconds for this scene and you see basically we already have what we wanted. So let's close this window now and set the focus just for interest reasons to the uh, mushroom here. It's 160. Let's go back and select the camera and put 160 in here instead of 50. So we have the focus back there now. Let's render it again. And that's what you see. Rendering, still rendering, took five seconds. Well, that's basically all I wanted to show you. If you animate the camera, it's more tricky because you have to keep track of the distance to the objects which you want to have in focus while you move the camera or while the object moves. But this can be done with a locator and uh, it's, uh, there are several tutorials out there, I guess, uh, about uh, moving cameras or moving objects plus depth of field. And don't forget, Wikipedia is not only for reading, it's also for writing. So if you have nice pictures, I think this article doesn't need any more pictures about depth of field effects. Uh, you can always contribute and you should because it will stay there forever and everybody will appreciate it without, probably without knowing you, but why should they know you? We are sharing and that's caring.